everybody and welcome to Hannah's Happy Space. I am Hannah and thank you for joining me here today. Um, as usual, you are joining me here at home, which is um, in a little town on the edge of Dartmoor in the southwest of England. Um, what? It's a new year. Happy New Year. I've forgotten how to podcast. <laughs> Yes, Happy New Year to you all. Um, I hope you all had a wonderful festive period. Um, if you celebrated Christmas, had Christmas holidays, then I hope you all had a wonderful time or whatever you did over the uh, the festive season. I hope you enjoyed yourself and hope you managed to get in a little bit of crafting time. Uh, I have been able to do so um, after Christmas, the <laughs> Christmas Day. Um, we had lots of family here, um, how many of us were there? There were nine of us on Christmas Day. I did the Christmas dinner, which I think was successful. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then we've had sort of family in and out um, over the festive time. Um, obviously, kids have been off school. What else can I say about that? You know, just a, norm a nice, normal Christmas, as normal as normal can be um <laughs> excuse me um yes yeah, so like i say happy new year welcome back welcome back for those of you who um already have been here before or subscribed welcome to those who are new here hopefully you will enjoy what you see today is a normal podcast last uh, video that I put up was with my lovely friend Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit and thank you so so much to all of you that watched um, and I have had a real flurry of subscribers since so thank you so much of you, um, to those of you who you know probably a lot of you were Ruth followers um, and came over and decided to stay so thank you so much I am um over the <laughs> over the thousand uh, subscribers mark now and I was waiting because sometimes you get to like a you know milestone and in people will come in go out come in um so I was waiting till I was well and truly over that mark to uh, say thank you very much and now I've got to be careful what I say because of the bots um there will be uh something to celebrate I am not organized enough to um, have something to show you today but those of you who have been here before know that I um, make project bags I have not been able to get into my craft room which is our conservatory that way a because it's freezing cold in there but mainly mainly even because obviously we've had lots of people here over Christmas it has been used as a bit of a dumping ground it's full of chairs and tables and so that is a job that needs doing before I can get in there and do some sewing or um, even just go in there and get the sewing machine and maybe bring it in the front room because like I say it is rather chilly out there. Today is the 8th of January. Um, if you watch any other UK podcasts you'll probably know we've had lots of um, horrific weather, storms, you know there's been flooding in areas um, all over the UK, lots of storm damage so hope everyone's you know taking as much care as they can everyone's okay um we've been quite lucky here there has been an awful lot of rain we live on top of a hill um you know like i say we're on the top of dartmoor so we're very lucky um that we haven't had flooding and that kind of thing but the rain has stopped fingers crossed but the chilly weather is well and truly here we've had frosty mornings um so it is a little bit nippier and being that my craft room is a conservatory yes it gets freezing cold so that is a long way of saying there will be something special to say thank you to all those people who subscribed um and on the same note um like i say i make project bags if you haven't been here before i have a kofi shop and um there was a christmas before christmas i did an update like i say i want to get back to sewing so there will be some new bags heading into the shop soon but i will let you all know when that is um I will probably if it's not if if I do it before another podcast I will pop up a community post here on YouTube. You can also find me over on Instagram um at Hannah's Happy Space. I'll put the details are always where you can find me the details are always underneath the videos in the comments. So like I say I'm here on YouTube over on Instagram and I have a Kofi shop where you can support me by 
purchasing bags or if you want to give a donation, buy me a coffee, that kind of thing. No pressure whatsoever, but that is where I am. And if you watched me talking to Ruth last time, I'm hoping to get a bit more active on Ravelry. Um, even if that's just a case of using it as a um, project, a project record. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but yes, I am Hannah's Happy Space over there as well. Is that right? I'm Hannah's. Yes, I am. <laughs> I know when I changed it, it used to have a different name, and then I changed it so that people could find me um, with a similar similar name to here. But like I say, information will be underneath. Cool, that was a big jibber jabber, wasn't it? Um, anything else to tell you? So yes, we've had Christmas, but um, within our family, we also have had a 21st birthday. My brother Finley was 21 on Christmas Eve. He came home from uni for a week or two. So we had a lovely birthday with him. He, if you've heard me talk about him before, is the board game fanatic for, um, birthday and Christmas he had a huge selection of new board games so we have played some really lovely different games over Christmas with him he went home just before the new year went back to Cardiff um or else oh and yesterday she won't be very impressed with me saying but yesterday on the 7th was Cara's birthday my sister who I live with she was 40 yesterday so she's had a lovely day as well. My uh, brother Dominic and his girlfriend Charlotte came up for the day and we just had a had a day together. Um, I don't think she wanted a birthday with us. <laughs> um, but yes, so we've had birthdays as well. Um, Sebi's gone back to school. He's been away this weekend at a golf tournament. Um, I think that's probably it. That's lots of things other people have done. I've just been doing the normal, um, you know, normal boring looking after everything here um, <laughs> so like i say is that everything oh uh just one other little thing that has come up it was it the last i think it was the last podcast not the last video i mentioned that my mum had broken her ankle um and had been staying with us and everything else that is uh healing up nicely she's we've been back to had we been back to the hospital when i spoke to you last i can't remember they were happy with her at the hospital. She's now at the physio, all going well. Fingers crossed in the next month or so she'll be back to full, full mobility, uh, running around, the, <laughs> running around. Um, yeah, so that's uh, all of the life gubbins. Shall we get on with some crafty content? The reason why you're here, you haven't come to hear me um, jabber. So uh, what should we start with? Let's start with what I am wearing. I am, like I say, it is chilly here today, so, uh, you know, knitters and crocheters are all prepared for this chilly weather. I am wearing one of my penguinos. I was just thinking, is it it's called a penguino? It is, isn't it? It's because I'm thinking of the kids' version as well, isn't there? A different one. This is, um, I've got, I've got two penguinos. This is my green and blue version. Um all held um yarn is held double is what i'm trying to say for my size i have held together um a dk and a four ply for each section so this is literally just um odd balls and scraps and leftovers and all sorts that i had in stash so i've mixed together commercial yarns and hand dyed yarns so that's this one did I say it was a Stephen West pattern? I think I did. Like I say, I've got two of these. I've knit five of these, I think. I've, done, I've got two myself. Cara's got one, mum's got one, and I've made a children's version as well. And I'd quite like another one. They're a really nice project, and they're super cosy, because obviously, you know, they're um, yarns held double for, for me. Um, yeah, the sizing depends on how, um, how, how? what is the word i'm looking for what thickness of yarn you use and needle size etc <laughs> so that was that um that's what i'm wearing to be honest i haven't got a huge amount to show you um i've got i'm just looking underneath because that's where my notes are i've got a few finished objects to talk about but i've only actually got one to show you um and a photo and some photos and 
only two whips that I'm currently working on. There are other things. I'm also going to talk to you at the end after those about a few bits that have come in um, and the plans for those. I was very lucky and had um, some crafty gifts at Christmas, you know, some yarns and some books and things like that. I'm not going to show you all of those now. I'll show you them as I use them. Um, so the one, two, three, three different things um, incoming that I'm going to show you are three that I've got plans for. Um, is that everything? <laughs> Let me think. Uh, I haven't got any major plans for 2024. I did speak a little bit about that with Ruth, about sort of techniques and things and bits that I want to do over the year. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, like there's been lots of podcasters at the moment are telling you about, you know, things they've done over the past year, things they've, they're planning to do this year. We went through a bit of that, um, me and Ruth, on our last video. So if you haven't watched that, you can head back to that one. Um, and I think that's that's it in terms of what I need to tell you. Let's get, I've already just said to you a second ago, let's, I'm here to tell, tell, start talking about the crafting and I haven't started. So come on, Hannah, get yourself together. <sighs> concentrate and let's talk to you about finished objects like I say finished objects some of them were gifts so I haven't got them here with me the first one was um I showed you on the previous podcast was a sweater that I was working on the flax sweater by Tin Can Knits and I was knitting that for my brother Harry um it was for his, one of his Christmas presents and I have a ball of the yarn here I knit that um flax sweater using oh, um, there we go one of the some of these this is yarn smith's free spirit aaron so this is from wool warehouse this is their own brand that they bought out i bought this when it was on sale and i'm not i don't know if it still is but it's you know it's an affordable yarn it is 100 percent acrylic um, so it's 100 grams and 185 meters knits to most aaron patterns um, and this is a colourway shade 1D008 um, and on the website it's listed as Malachite. So you, as you can see it's one of these sort of, is it barber pole they call it, these two tones in the yarn um, and lots of different colours in and out and amongst the yarns. I was a fair way through when I showed you it last um, but like I say I haven't got it to show you I will put in a photograph um, um, Harry loved it he tried it you know he had been trying it on on and off to make sure it's going to be the right size to fit him um, but yes he is very happy with his jumper my other two brothers Dominic and Finley both went oh that's a nice jumper and are both you know trying to make their minds up whether they'd quite like one at some point as well um, <laughs> So it, that's the way, isn't it? If you're a knitter or a crocheter, someone sees what you've made, then they think, hmm, I could have one of those too. <laughs> so yes, I may be knitting more uh, gentleman sweaters in the future. So that was that one. Um, I also, over, well, before Christmas was, I couldn't show it to you because the person I gave it to you watches the podcast, I think. Um, my friend Sarah, I crocheted her a cardigan for Christmas. Um, a flower power cardigan from Sam Speedo. If you've been here before, you'll know that I've made two of those in the past. I've got one for myself, which is um, like a khaki green colour and all the flowers are pinks and purples and oranges and things like that. And I also made one for Ruth. Uh, hers was a navy cardigan with Oh, it's all multicolour flowers, rainbow flowers with yellow centres. That's what I did for her. And for Sarah, now I'm talking about it. I haven't got a picture to show you. Um, I will see. She's probably at work at the moment. So if I can't get a photo in this time, I'll try and pop a photo in next time. I'll ask her to take a photograph of it for me. Um, hers was a sort of petrol blue colour. Um, then all the flowers were white daisies and then the middles I did all different sort of rainbow tones so that was that one um so those are the two items that I don't have here to show you <coughs> excuse me 
because I just have a sick or so I'm guessing on hopefully this isn't too hot I feel maybe just before I sat down and hopefully it's not going to be boiling hot no nope, we're okay okay right so that's those two um actually another item that I've got I'm gonna to have to put a photograph in just because I'm looking that way behind you it's on the floor on the blocking mats um almost dry but not quite dry enough for me to to show you so I'll pop a photo in and um, let me check it this is the grand opening shawl by Telebean Knits which is uh, Stephanie Lockman um I spoke about this one on the video with Ruth I showed I think I must have been on to about day five or six it was a it was sort of a it was hard to show this sort of size when I last showed it um like I say if you haven't seen that it's back on the other one so I started this shawl um as a way of getting over my FOMO um <laughs> for advent calendars I didn't have a yarn advent calendar this year which is fine not a problem. I wasn't really worried about, you know, didn't think, oh no, I've not got one. But then, you know, when you're on Instagram things and you start seeing all these beautiful yarns that people you sort of, you know, think, hmm, what's that? Uh, but to combat that fear of missing out on those, what I did was purchased the grand opening shawl pattern from uh, Stephanie Lotvin, um, and it was an advent pattern. So one part of the pattern was released every day um, of, you know, from um, the 1st of December to the 25th of December. Obviously, I didn't have an advent calendar to knit it from. So what I did, oops, today I see the camera. Um, what I did was went through all my um, leftovers, minis, scraps, those kind of things, um, and weighed them all out because the um, advent pattern was designed to go with a particular advent calendar that were 20 gram minis. But I, I've barely used, I think only one, I'm just looking at it behind you. I think one part used near uh, probably 18 grams at most. It wasn't even that much, I don't think. So in the pattern breakdown, she gives you um, the meterage for every single day. So then you can convert that to grams. So like the first section used maybe two grams at most. So I was able to go through, work out, um, you know, five gram pile or 10 gram, all those kind of things. All completely random. As you know, I am a uh, color lover, love a bright color, love neons, love multis, any any color I'm there. So yeah, as you can imagine, there was a real mis mishmash of things. Um, but my brain works in a way that I like to put those colors in some kind of order. I love a rainbow, I love a fade. All that kind of thing. I do like random and I have done random, but when I've done that, it's normally a, a colour group that I've put together for that purpose. So a bit like the, I just don't think I've got anything here to quickly grab. So a bit like um, if you've done an Attic 24 blanket, Lucy from Attic 24, one of, they give you a colour pack and then it sort of, she does like randomises the colours. They all work together, but they're in a random order is what I'm trying to get to. So I can do do that. These, when I started picking them out for this um, shawl, I, you know, I'm looking at, I think I started off with like a purple. So I wanted to go in my brain, find the next purples, maybe into blues or pinks, that kind of thing. Couldn't do that because of the weight. So what I did was got Cara to point and she picked out a completely random order. We took a photograph of it. So I knew what was coming each, what which one to use each day um, and did it that way. So it is completely random. I do like it, but it's too random for me. So that has been gifted to Cara for her birthday. She can't wear it yet, like I say, because it's on the blocking mats. Um, I will put in a photograph now. And that will, so that's the um, shawl finished. As you can see, it's a triangular shawl and it's worked in a triangle, then you picked up and did down one side, then down the other side, and did it like like that way. Um, 
so you did like a stripe each day each patterned part is split up by a stripe of garter stitch um, and I've seen some other ones on Instagram and on Ravelry on the Frock Projects page of beautiful fades and some even done in a solid colour. They look lovely. Um, but it was a really enjoyable pattern because obviously you've got a tiny bit, or not, obviously thing by the end, bits got longer. Um, but you've got a small piece of pattern to do every day um, and every alternate day was a garter stitch. So it was, you know quite nice that you knew you had something simple to do and then every other day there was a you know a lace pattern or a rib pattern a different stitch each day so it was really lovely just making sure I don't keep the camera again um yeah really enjoyed that one so that was the what's that one two three finished objects and uh one more that I can physically show you I'm gonna have another drink sorry I haven't jabbered on like this to no one but you know to you guys technically no one in the room it's getting a bit of a dry throat from it okay sorry i hope that wasn't too gulpy um okay now i was searching around for the tag for this one for the ball band and i can't find it anywhere um but I've got the details. So just to straighten things out. I showed you a couple of, well, it was back in November I went, but I can't remember when the podcast was that I showed you. I'd been to Stitch Fest, um, a yarn festival in Newton Abbott, and I showed you the bits and bobs that I bought from there. And I had purchased a double knit skein of yarn from Camel's Yarn, and it was called Earth Day. Yeah, I'm just making sure that I've got it right because, like I say, I haven't got the label to show you. Earth Day, and it was 100% Merino DK, and I think I told you my plan was to knit a hat with it, and ba bam, I have knit a hat with it. So, just hold it a little bit closer. Hopefully, the colours are okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. So, it was a green purple and blue variegated yarn oh yeah that's spot on um so this was a free pattern from ravelry this is the rough road hat by sharon larson everything i all patterns and everything i talk about I'll, I'll link down below i have got some of this yarn left i haven't weighed it just do it I've got about that much left, so probably maybe 30 grams, something like that. I could have put a pom-pom on, but I don't think I will. Um, yeah, this really lovely textured hat. Like I say, it is a free pattern, but I won't, you know, explain how you get that lovely texture. So I knew I wanted something um definitely with some sort of texture i didn't want to just do a plain flat hat but sometimes um patterns can get lost in a variegated yarn can't they so just a nice texture I, and it's got um this fold up brim i did alter the pattern in that sense that yes the pattern has a fold up brim but i don't think you'll be able to see here it's so it actually folds on that that line there. So um, it'll tell on the pattern. It tells you all the rib you need to make the whole thing, so you can fold it up. What I did was knit half of that, then did a full round of um, knit stitch, then did the rib again. So you get this fold line. I haven't actually worn this yet, um, but now the chilly cold is definitely here I, it's a proper beanie i didn't do any slouch with it obviously i could have done because i had enough yarn fringe is all sticking out um but yeah it's lovely and cozy i won't be able to wear this out on a wet day because it's like I say 100 percent um merino it's not my usual really bright bright colors but really oh, excuse me um really do love the colours so and I'm I will definitely do 
um, hat in this pattern again. Really nice pattern. Just something a bit um, different to just knitting round and round. So this was a a a, a <laughs> sorry a knit club project because it's nice and simple pattern when you can chat and not worry about complicated patterns. That is that one. There we go. That's the rough road hat. So that is all the finished objects. Oops. No, pop that over there. Out of the way. Yes, that's all the finished objects that I've got to show you today. So let's move on to whips, works in progress. Like I say, I've only got two to show you. These are two active whips. There are other things um, in project bags around and about, like there always is. Um, my Stephen West painting honeycombs jacket has not been worked on since last I showed it to you. That is the next thing to come out. I want to finish off um, the shawl that I'm going to show you. Then I will pick out the um, cardigan again and crack on with that because there are a couple of other garments that I want to get made um, sooner rather than later. And I'd like to get that one done out of the way before I start another one. So let's show you the shawl that I'm talking about. This shawl came to my attention um, from Alex, lovely Alex over at my Yarny Corner. She, I'm on her Facebook group and she had put on there that that's what the advent project she was doing with her own hand-dyed um, advent calendar lots of other people in the group started doing it and it's a modular knit so um what was i gonna say you know th so lot uh, that i like modular knits is what i'm trying to get to um you know when you pick up stitches and you join on so there's no sewing together that kind of thing um but like i said i didn't have an advent calendar but i knew it was not uh, something i'd be able to recreate um with minis or scraps or that kind of thing so i kept that one on my radar um, and I cast that on as soon as I'd finished my grand opening shawl. So this is ooh, the mystery shawl, which was a knit along. Um, so it's Advent, Advent knit along called the mystery shawl by Rene Strauss. It was a free pattern up and I think was it free or discounted up until Advent began. Um, it's paid for pattern now on Ravelry. I've just got to try and get it all in the right way up. And I've got two needles attached, so that's why I need to try and... Ooh, what was that? <laughs> that's why I need to try and get it organised. I have used in my project, lovely project bag here where I'm keeping it, my So Yarn Alicious bag, that lovely group gave me. Um, there's still some bits in here. I'm not going to get them all out because they're in various states of skeins or balls or um, bits, the bits left over, like you know, little teeny weeny bits that are left over from previous bits, even teenier weenier bits. So this has been designed for either a 20 gram advent calendar or a 10, yeah, 10 gram advent calendar. So I won with the 20 grams. Again, got all the scraps out, all the minis out, everything out. <laughs> um, and went with a fade this time. So just gonna get rid of that, whatever that bit of fluff was. And I'm gonna try and hold it up for you to see, but it's not all going to fit in. I will start out of the beginning. So each day you do one of these blocks. So I've started with this uh, grey purple colour, then a bit more purple, going into blues, then into greens, and I've got some multi colours. Wait, ooh, 
with all the different sort of greens and yellows and now we are heading into pinks so as you can see it's going to be a large shawl um like I say, all of these are either minis or scraps. This, like this section here, bring it a little bit closer, has been made up using three different colours. So things that I thought were similar or faded into one another, I weighed all those together and then um, faded those into each other, I think. This section was the same here, so you can see it comes across here. So really using up um, small amounts of yarn. Some of them, you know, little bits were sort of eight grams, that kind of thing. So total them up to make 20 grams. None of the sections have used the whole 20 grams. So there's been little tiny, you know, like I showed you, little tiny bits left. Um, just seeing if I've got, so I know that one came from a 20 gram mini I think that's about four grams left over so maybe a small amount but it will get used <laughs> so I'll try and show you the th whole thing so I won't say anything for a moment no it can't fit the whole thing in So I am super pleased with this one. Um, lots of lovely bright colours, lots of colours that are a bit more ordered for me. Um, and using up stash. So I am currently on day 15 or section 15 of this um, project. So 10 more to go. And really quick, not necessarily quick, Quick because it's ooh, squishy garter. Um, that was very pleasant for you, was it? Squishy garter. Um, and the pattern is super easy to memorise. So you're doing a different section each time. As like I say, I've got two needles on the go. It, I think on like within the pattern, it probably suggests that you have two cabled needles, as it were, with the actual tips. I have ordered some more needle tips but they've not arrived um but it's been fine i use the interchangeable knit pros so these are knit pro symphonies i've i don't know what's happened somewhere along the line i've lost misplaced could be on a project who knows this is a 3.5 millimeter needles but like you can see i've got a normal length and a short length where the other ones have gone i don't know I'm using these um, Knit Pro Mindfulness, is it Mindfulness or just Mindful? Mindfulness cables, which are the um, cables with no memory, love them. So these are ready to go on for the knitting part. The other section that I've just finished, I've got on another cable with the stoppers on. So um, when I've done this section, I'll swap over and I'll put the stoppers on this end and then go over and put the needles on the other. If I had two sets of needles, I'd just have the needles on both and have um, these kind of stoppers on. So that's that one. Thank you, Alex, for bringing this to my attention. <laughs> Do you think we might get a nice thumbnail? I, I'm, I'm always hesitant, to be honest. Every time I tell you, oh, I'll try and get a good um, thumbnail. And they might look half decent, but normally it's because I've been through and had to pick one myself. What do you think? Might happen, you never know. So that is that one. Let me pop that one away. In there. That's what I will be working on later today, I am sure. Another yeah. Before it goes cold. 
it's not fruit tea is not too bad cold is it because it's a bit like juice but this is um it's a bird and blend fruity christmasy festive tea if you like it's called tis the squeezin and it's um sort of orangey fruity mixed spice kind of flavor it's very nice but not quite so nice um when it's going chilly okay let's get on with this shall we right what we're we doing for time oh not too bad i thought this was going to be a short one and we're already half an hour you know in so next project in my mandalorian bag from amelia x joy and carrying on the theme with the bag which wasn't actually planned are my grogu needle stoppers so i am this is my new um knit club project i don't know why i'm struggling so much with the words knit club my new knit club project so a nice round and round project for talking <sighs> this is called the frost at dawn cowl and is by thread and ladle which aren't isn't someone i've heard of before thread and ladle the pattern is by beatrice perrin darlin i think is how that's pronounced i'm not sure um again this is another free pattern oh sorry i'm a bit tangled up a free pattern on ravelry i will put in a picture so you know where we're going right okay so this is mine so far so obviously it'll go this way up it's on quite a little um cable so i can't show you to its full extent <gasps> look at those colors Ooh. <laughs> i love i love this yarn okay so we have just started i've done the initial sort of um cast on and then a bit of garter stitch for the top then we're getting into the garter stitch stocking stitch repeats and yeah lovely easy project but look at that yarn oh, it's so nice <laughs> um yeah i'm really enjoying working on this one this ooh, is there it is this is the ball of yarn ooh, it's not focus look at all those colors <gasps> beautiful um this is pixie yarn ooh, yeah pixie yarn so again this is one that i bought um at stitch fest i showed you this when i came back this is called In Your Face, and it's actually a sport weight yarn, um, which is a super wash merino, 80% nylon, 20%. This pattern is designed for a worsted weight yarn, but it has two versions, a worsted weight and a sport weight. So, ideal sport weight for that. And as I didn't really know what I would do with one skein of sport weight yarn, but I saw these and knew I had to have knew knew it was coming home with me as soon as i saw all those neons and speckles that is exactly that's my yarn <laughs> i had to have it so not a huge amount to see and i'm going to try my hardest that this is only for working on at knit club i i'm going to keep it in my bag out of the way we go we we meet at Knit Club once a week on Thursday in um, in the cafe in o in Oakhampton. Ooh, lovely! So I can get a fair amount done. We're normally there for about two hours, um, and like I say, round and round, marvelous. So that is the Frost at Dawn cowl. Pop that back in there. So that is all the current finished or currently working on knitting projects no crochet on the go at the moment there are plans for two crochet items um three really because i'd like to have another go um 
at my Attic 24 Star Bright blanket. Um, I've spoken about it before. I'm doing the, well, I want to do the square version. I was having trouble with, I don't know whether I was having trouble with tension or hook size or what, but my, my squares weren't lying flat. I'm going to have set aside some time to have a go at that. What I think I might do is rather than um, make the square as it directs in the instructions, as in colours, because you uh, change colours in different rounds, I might just do the pattern in one whole colour um, so that I'm not wasting any um, yarn from the kit. Um, and then I can have a play about if it's not right, I can rip it out, try again. I will get there. I will. But I'm just going to show you um, a couple of things that I've had come in that I've got definite plans for. That's um, a bit of a sort of a, an, a, not an aim necessarily, but a, a mindful sort of thinking behind yarn buying this year that you know I'm not I'm not the sort of person who is able to just go right I'm going to buy that beautiful yarn and that's you know that's not really a position that I'm in there are lots of beautiful yarns out there that I would like to buy um but uh, you know being conscientious about what I'm going to do with them and that kind of thing so buying for a specific project is always a good idea but obviously there's those yarns that you see and you just have to have it like the pixie yarn but let me show you what um i have got maybe not the most exciting yarns in the world but you know they will become something beautiful i have bought um a fair few balls of this this is yarn smiths create double knit like shown you some yarn smiths before this is wool warehouse's own yarn brand um and this is their double knit, very similar to Starcraft Special DK from what I can tell so far. Obviously, I haven't used it. Very soft, lovely colours, huge array of colours they've got at the moment. And I bought this before, yeah, just before Christmas. Um, what does it say? <coughs> Uh, do, 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 yarn smiths. Da, 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 da. It was on offer. That's what I'm trying to get to. Um, <laughs> how many have I got here? Oh, yeah. So it was one pound seventy five a ball. That's that's where I'm getting to. It's not normally that price. Is it? No. I think it was on offer. Is it normally that price? I don't know. Anyway, it's an affordable acrylic yarn. This is a hundred grams, um, two hundred ninety meters double knit. Acrylic yarn. This is colourway Deep Ocean, a very similar colour to when I was talking to you earlier about the Flower Power cardigan I've made for my friend Sarah. So it must have stuck in my head that I liked that colour. This will become a totally toadstools crochet sweater and um, crochet jumper from Sam Sabido. So the same designer as the Flower Power cardigan. I will put a picture of the jumper in here now. Um, there is also a cardigan of this pattern that is available, but I'm going to do the sweater. So this is going to be for the main body of the jumper. As you can see, it had toadstools around the top. My plan, I think, I was thinking rainbow <laughs> toadstools. Um, obviously, I'm only going to need a small amount of each, so I'm going to have to raid the stash find out some colours, see what I can, see what I like, see what I can come up with. But that is the plan for that. Um, second in, was actually in the same order, uh, uh, that um, when I got this. So we have got some Rico Rikarumi Nilly Nilly. Now I saw, first saw this, I did see it obviously, obviously I say obviously, but I saw it on um, Instagram. So follow Rico. And they always, you know, bring in, when they bring them out, they show them on there. This is the Nilly Nilly. It's a chenille yarn. I'm not 100% sure what weight yarn it actually is. Does it say? 
it says a three mil needle or hook so I mean I'd look at it and say it was a double but anyway I have I saw um Jeanette lovely Jeanette from Crafty Clove Creation using this very recently whoa um and then when I found the pat found, come across the pattern that I'm going to use this for I thought oh that I'm gonna have a go with that chenille yarn never had never tried this before or this type of yarn sorry the ball keeps unraveling and i'm fiddling around with it so i've got two different shades they're quite similar but um i only need a little bit of this and i will put in a photo now of what i'm going to make with it that is the capybara pattern by curious papaya um my brother harry loves capybaras and he's always showing me the video on youtube of the capybaras in the pool with the oranges and it has the orange on its head so <laughs> that is the plan for that pattern it as you can see on the pattern it has a little orange and in the actual pattern it you put a magnet inside the capybara's head and a magnet in the orange so they can take it on and off. I don't know if that's what I will actually do because I'm not really sure where I can get the magnets from. But he will have a capybara. He has already asked if he can have a capybara with a crown and a cape. It's from something. He showed me a picture. And to be honest, I said to him, well, actually, mum gave me a tin full of little metal crowns when they were moving out. The things us crafters keep. So that's a possibility but that's that's the plan for that one then finally a little treat after christmas i did have some christmas money sorry for the rustling i have treated myself to whoa, this lovely skein of yarn from flu fibers she had a sale on. I don't know if it's still on but there was she had a big sale here we go so flu fibers this is called this colorway is called born this way it's four ply, four ply sock it is 80% uh, merino 20% nylon and it's a high twist um, but look at all those oh neon speckles i have seen this colorway of hers for a while and i've always wanted to get my hands on it i had some christmas money had a sale the stars aligned and this became mine <laughs> um this is destined to become the me the memento shawl by jackie verbeek i'll put a picture in now Um, that is a one skein shawl so that is what this is going to become when not 100% sure not too far away in the future hopefully because it's playing on my mind <laughs> um, so that's that one and um, you get a nice little ukulele in these for your purchase from blue fibers so that is lovely I will just show you her that's her so there we go cover that up don't rustle it so that is everything so i've shown you a few new things few plans that oh, sorry chili, few plans that are in the pipeline um things that i'm working on things that i have finished um and that's you know that's the podcast <laughs> that's what we're all here to talk about so I don't, I don't know what I was going to say then. It all disappeared. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, <laughs> thank you for sticking around. Um, if you managed to get through all the jabbering. I don't know what it is about the... It hasn't been that long since I podcast. But, you know, the first one of the new year. And it, it all goes to pot. Um, hopefully things things will get... You know, this is standard, really. For me. I don't know what I'm just talking about. This is what normally happens here. It's not a professional podcast. Um, but hopefully, you know... I. It seems people enjoyed. <laughs> so just another big, big thank you to all of those new subscribers and those who continued to subscribe. And um, I will let you know what we're how we're going to celebrate next time. Um, and another big, big thank you to those of you who supported my shop over the last year. Um, 
oh, it wasn't, hasn't been open that long, but thank you very much um, to those who have purchased from me. Um, and just thank you to everyone who continues to support the podcast. Thank you very, very much. Um, and hopefully you will continue to uh, support me for over the following year and hopefully um, a little channel over here can continue to grow. So thank you again. I've said it too many times. Uh, can you say thank you too many times? I don't know. But I will see you all again very soon. Not 100% sure when. I don't put a, um, a time on this. You know, I don't say I'll definitely be here in two weeks time, but... Um, you know, there or thereabouts. So until next time, have a lovely time with all your crafting and anything else that you uh, get up to. And I will see you all again soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.